Good afternoon or good morning, wherever you may be. Uh, my name is Alan Miller, and we're here for Emergency Reporting's Virtual Thursday, uh, the 16th one of this year, mastering the uh, Nemesis 3 EPCR. Um, I am joined here with Steve and Jean, uh, and we are going to go through the uh, EPCR for Nemesis 3 and uh, cover any questions you may have and uh, get get through the nuances of uh, our our newer EMS product. Uh, my name, so my name is Alan Miller. Uh, I've uh, been in the fire service for about 10 years, uh, using emergency reporting for about half of that now, um, and been employed with emergency reporting since uh, about February of this year, um, and having a blast working with uh, many folks like yourself. Uh, Steve and Gene here, uh, I'll have him introduce himself, but he's going to be in our questions area. Uh, if you'll see that on your control panel uh, for the GoToWebinar, uh, he's going to be in there answering any questions you may have uh, as I go through the uh, PCR. So, Stephen, you want to introduce yourself? Uh, yeah, actually, um, my name is Stephen Gene. Um, as mentioned before, I'm the Deputy Fire Chief at Lockheed Martin Aeronautics Company in Fort Worth. Um, I've been a regional trainer since just uh, probably around the same time, um, around uh, February time frame, February, March, I came on, um, and uh, been, we've been a customer of emergency reporting since 2013. So I'll be uh, definitely answering and monitoring any questions you, you may post down in the, the lower right-hand corner and see if I can assist as we go along. Awesome. So, thank you, Stephen. So, uh, before we get started here, uh, cover a few things. Uh, always a reminder that uh, Stephen and I, we love to come out to you and uh, give you some training on site. Uh, we can also do online trainings, and we have our RTAs. Actually, I, I thought I changed that from RTCs to RTAs. Uh, we changed the name to Regional Training Academies. Um, that uh, are a great opportunity. I actually got to go to the one in Austin in February of this year. Uh, was a great learning experience. Uh, speaking of which, uh, our next one is actually, well, two weeks. Uh, October 24th to 26th in nice sunny Miami, Florida. Uh, so there's still some spots open, so if you would uh, like to join, have your chief bring you on down, uh, we'd love to have you. Um, and as far as those uh, trainings, if you do have any interest, and uh, scheduling one of those trainings. Um, Nicole Beard is our training coordinator and uh, her information is there and we can always get it to you afterwards and it's on our website uh, if you'd like to schedule training. Um, and as always a quick reminder is uh, to find the latest info on virtual Thursdays, um, updates to the system and other information uh, go to the support tab at the top of the page, at the top of your login, excuse me, and uh, you can go to news and announcements and all of that stuff will be listed in there. All right, without further ado, let's dive right in. All right, so as many of you already know, we're going to go to the incidents tab, and I already set up a uh, call for us so that we can skip through a lot of the infra stuff since we're going to focus on NIMSIS. We'll, we'll quickly go through here. Uh, we got all of our uh, dates and incident numbers, 321 standard uh, EMS incident type. Info 2, we're going to select yes for PCR so that we can do our training. Why don't we go right here? Not sure here. Mark might be working in the same program or in the same login. All right, uh, we'll go to basic info three. We got our uh, address. Going to go ahead and put in nursing home because seems like that's what we do. Uh, <laughs> we'll go into basic info four, and there this is going to be one of the first pages where we have some new areas for uh, Nemesis three. And one of the first things you'll notice is the response mode is, has some different verbiage. Used to be lights and sirens, no lights and sirens. Uh, NIMSIS and the federal government decided to change the wording, and now it's emergent, non-emergent, uh, emergent downgraded, emergent upgraded. 
So that uh, you'll notice that that is new. We'll go ahead and fill in some dates here, dates and times, just to Let's see here. Fill in some times. We'll put in some uh, people. Uh, Mark Mark Wolf, one of our other regional trainers. This is his program. He's got the uh, the Bengals roster in here, so it's going to be a losing PCR. <laughs> uh, so we'll get through the the medic here, and we'll just do the medic. We'll delete out the engine here. Um, one of the other new things is the PSAP dispatch notified an initial responder arrived on scene. Um, this is required in some states, other states not. Um, you'll be able to get back the information on the validation results uh, state by state for this. Um, and you can also contact your state if they're going to require it. Uh, in Ohio, they do not require it. Um, and we don't require our guys to put it in. So we'll go ahead and go next and we'll go to basic info 5. Complaint reported by dispatch. Uh, this is one of the new nicer things is that we have a lot of new selections. Uh, before it's kind of seemed like uh, with NIPSIS 2 that you were kind of squeezing whatever you're dispatched on into something that really wasn't the appropriate choice. Um, so got a lot more options uh, that help you get through it. Uh, we'll go ahead and select falls and we'll just put in that we're going to transport and provide ALS. Next, and we'll get into our PCR. Whoop, we skipped right over it and went to an incident narrative because I had already been in it. So we're in the MS tab. Add new patient. This is the new, uh, I guess, new within the last year uh, PCR look. Um, so where we start is add new patient. And as you can see, we've got a whole new look here on the left-hand side for our tabs. Uh, these make it a lot easier for um, working on tablets um, and being able to press the button with your finger. Uh, we use Fujitsu tablets at our work, and uh, it makes it a lot easier to be able to tap the buttons rather than in Nymphus 2 where you're trying to, to thread the needle and get your finger on the button. Um, as you can see, you got the red hazard sign with the exclamation point and green check. Um, as with their other areas in the system, green is good, red is bad, um, and a little bit different. And this is one of the things that we're changing over uh, throughout the system is that instead of it being red text, we have uh, a red asterisk in areas where items are required. So as you can as you watch, I go through this uh, PCR. You'll notice that different things become required when I select different options within tabs. So I'll select Medic 101. Um, primary role of the unit and level of care will automatically populate from uh, the background settings that we selected um, actually last the uh, last virtual Thursday. Um, if you uh, missed that, go ahead you can go ahead and find that on our uh, in our knowledge base articles and watch that recording. Uh, where we went over all those background settings. Type of service requested, it'll be 911 response for us for here. And I'm going to go ahead and select treated and transported by EMS unit, by this EMS unit. Uh, when I do that, you'll notice on the left hand side a lot of the uh, tabs will change and require some new information. Uh, another one of the new things with the uh, NIMSIS 3 is the initial patient acuity and the final patient acuity. Uh, you have to select that uh, right here on the initial on the response and crew page and you'll have to select it again in the destination as far as far as the final patient acuity so we'll go ahead and say this person's green uh, automatically has the uh, cert levels populated for people that have them uh, selected in the uh, personnel settings but I'll, uh, I'll add mine here can uh, add a role so we'll just say I'm the driver and I was wearing gloves and we have the ability to add in exposures uh, whether it's uh, body fluid needle stick injuries from lifting whatever it may be so I'll go through and 
select everybody's. And if I go, if I if I do something too fast, make sure that you let Steven know and he can stop me because uh, I have a tendency to fly through things because I that's what I do on the medic at the hospital. <laughs> Uh, down here, delay types, uh, kind of like in our uh, basic info 4 page for our apparatus, we have the ability to put in delay types. Uh, they have some more options for us uh, that provide a little bit more explanation. Uh, so now that we have entered all this information, got all the red asterisks taken care of, our uh, response and career tab is green. So we'll move on to patient info. Uh, for patient info, I'm going to go ahead and use a uh, patient that Mark has used previously so that I can show you the uh, uh, frequent flyer um, option. Let's see here. He used Jim Shoe. Hopefully, he's put this in before. Jim Shoe. And it's a male. Now, once I put his birthday in here, you should see the frequent flyer option pop up. I hit tab, and there it is. So I have the ability to pre-fill this PCR with the uh, frequent flyer info, or I can hit no thanks. Um, the information that will be populated, you'll have first name, last name, middle name, gender, date of birth, weight, height, driver's license, race, social security number, phone numbers, emails, home address, relative guardian, and then you'll have the medical history page where you have the allergies, food allergies, um, med history, current medications, and then also in the billing panel, the primary method of payment, payer type, and all fields for each insurance company will be uh, populated from the previous PCR. So I'll hit prefill this PCR. Um, as you can see, no social security number was put in that time, so I'll put in, hopefully that's the right amount of numbers. Um, so next time, if uh, we take in Jim Shu again, uh, this time his social security number will pop up. His address has already popped up. Um, we have the ability to put in medical documents. Um, we can say that he has a state EMS do not resuscitate. Um, we can put in contact info for the patient, contact info for a relative or guardian, and contact info for the employer. Um, I know a lot of people say, well, this seems kind of crazy. Uh, why would I put all this stuff in there? Uh, just the other day, actually yesterday, at a nursing home near, near us, a uh, worker was working on the roof of the nursing home and fell 11 stories down and died. Uh, and to me, that's something where lawyers are going to be having their eyes looking all over it, so or all over your PCR. So you, maybe you do want to add in the employer's name and info just so that it is uh, in there and you have documented to the best of your ability. So we've got all our patient info in. Green check mark. We'll move to medical history. Um, nothing required in here, but lots of good areas to add information. Uh, who you got the information from, you can add in patient doctors, uh, medication allergies, food, environmental allergies, uh, surgical history, immunizations, current meds, alcohol drug use indicators. Um, this is one thing, alcohol drug use indicators, that some states do require, I know. Um, so we'll say that, um, say none reported. Uh, pregnancy and last oral intake. So since there's nothing required in here, you're not going to have a green check mark, but we are good to go. So we'll move on to patient care. How are we doing, Stephen? Any any questions that are popping up? Yeah, we do have a, a couple questions. I think they're just uh, maybe individual uh, questions. I'm working through a couple of nothing. That okay. All right. Sounds good. So here on uh, patient care, uh, the the basics that are required are the uh, complaints or initial complaint, primary symptom, and primary impression. So we'll start with uh, the top where it's not necessarily required, but uh, patient activity. 
This is uh, activity information that comes straight from NIMSYS. Um, you're going to find that you're going to have some things that are going to fit and some obvious things that aren't going to fit. But my favorite, and I do this every time I do a training, is uh, milking an animal. <laughs> so we're going to go ahead and put in milking an animal because Jim Shu is milking an animal. <laughs> um, date and time last known well. Date and time of symptom onset. Uh, these are not necessarily required by NIMSYS. Um, each individual, once again, each individual state may vary. Barriers to patient care. Um, once again, this is they added some more information for us, some more options. Uh, we have obesity, uh, physically restrained, psychologically impaired, lots of different options. So if you have barrier to patient care, put that in. Uh, we'll add a complaint. We'll say fell from chair. Um, it'll automatically select primary, and if you add in a second one, it'll automatically select secondary for you. Uh, you have the ability to put in a duration um, from prior experience. In this box, all that they want is between a digit between 1 and 360. Nothing else will uh, be accepted because then it wants you to select units. So if you try to say one minute in the duration, it will not accept it. So the way you would do that is put in one minute. Um, anatomic location, we'll say that his complaint is his back and it is musculoskeletal. So now that we're done, we can hit done. And now we're populated. Uh, primary symptom, we'll put in it's an injury or uh, pain, pain unspecified. Um, once again, this is, these are options straight from Nemesis. So uh, you're going to have some, you're going to, sometimes you're going to have to uh, find some specific options to uh, squeeze your uh, different symptoms within. Uh, you, for, for example, you have other signs and symptoms involving the musculoskeletal system. Uh, you have, let's see, for bleeding, I believe you have hemorrhage from other sites. Um, elsewhere not classified. Uh, lots of different options. Primary impression. Um, let's see here. We'll do an injury, and we'll say it's an injury of the lower back. Once again, they have this uh, narrowed down into uh, different areas of the body for you. And uh, sometimes that they have great things to uh, fit what you have, and other times they do not. Um, but once again, straight from the NIMSIS and the federal government. So uh, we have all of our initial assessment done. We can click Done, and we're good. Uh, so we do have the green check mark uh, because that's all that NIMSIS actually requires. But uh, we're going to go ahead and go across and do vitals. Hey, Alan, Alan, yes, quick before we go, um, can you go? Did you go over medical history up there? Yeah. Okay. Um, there was a question. Uh, I said, like to see how others are putting this information in. Um, they said that they're just basically leaving it blank till they get to the end. Um. So it's really going to depend. I would say it's really going to depend uh, department, department, and policy. Um, for our department, um, a lot of the times we don't use this page, to be honest. We, we type our history in the narrative. Um, so it's going to be department, department. Um, I would say that this is probably something you're going to do at the end of your report. You're probably right. Um, going back and uh, you know, when you're completely done and you have all your patient history, adding that information in. I don't know if that, that necessarily answers the question, but um, I think it's going to be a department by department policy as to how you're using this page. Um, you know, a lot of departments aren't going to necessarily worry about environmental or food allergies or the patient practitioners, but others do. So. Yeah, so this may be from, a, and, and like you said, each department, every agency does it a little differently. It may be, because this is maybe going to take you a little bit longer, uh, maybe it's not something you're going to do on scene as you're trying to obtain patient information. Right, yeah. Okay, I'll, I'll ask the, uh, 
the individual who asked the question to make sure that um, basically right now we we still we wait our department waits till the end to, to do that stuff in the narrative as well. Yeah, and uh, especially for us, we do a lot of nursing home transports, um, and it would take us we would never get back in service if we were adding all the medications in. Um, so a lot of the times we're either um, taking a picture of med lists or scanning them and putting them in the files. Okay, sorry to, sorry to get you off track there. No, no, that's a great question. All right. So we'll go back in here to vitals. All right, so uh, date and time. So we'll say now, but we'll, I'm going to put in 1,400 because I put in 1,400 for all of our times. And Andy Dalton attained them, so hopefully he didn't fumble them or throw an interception, but we'll, uh, we'll just hope he made it through it. Uh, we'll, we'll go through and put all these in. 78 for a heart rate. Um, you have the ability to put in uh, rhythms, so we can say it's regular, how you measured it. Um, blood pressure, and as soon as you start putting in a blood pressure, it's going to require the method of the blood pressure me measurement. Um, so we'll say that we did an automated cuff, respiratory rate, uh, respiratory effort. Uh, you have your entitled CO2, CO, pulse ox, blood glucose. This, uh, the vitals tab is going to cover a lot of your assessment. Uh, it makes it really nice to, um, in one clean swipe, be able to cover um, everything that you need to cover. Um, one of the nice things is Celsius to Fahrenheit. So if I put in 98.6 Celsius or Fahrenheit, it will convert to Celsius, vice versa. Um, I'll tell you how you did it. Cardiac rhythm. Uh, so we'll just say it's a sinus rhythm. Uh, and we'll say we did a 12 lead. Uh, we have the ability to select numerous different options, 3, 4, 5, 12, 15, 18. Uh, we have our pain scale. We'll say he's pretty pain and uh, a lot of pain. Uh, we have level of responsiveness. So we'll say he's alert. And then we have our Glasgow Coma Scale. Um, and one of the nice things about this is if it's a 15, we can hit set maximum, or if they're either dead or unconscious, we can say set minimum. So we'll just say set maximum. Um, so then once we're done, we have the ability to hit add another. And it'll come back up, and we can go through and add another uh, set of vitals. Um, personally, the way that I do it is I do my first set of vitals. I go through and enter as much information as I can. Uh, consequential, the next uh, follow-up vitals, I enter anything that has changed. So if you know if the pulse ox is still good, I may just enter in the, the follow-up blood pressures. If the cardiac rhythm, excuse me right there, if the cardiac rhythm is the same, I may not go through and add in another cardiac rhythm. Uh, just I'd leave it as the first one. Uh, he was in sinus rhythm, so if I didn't change it, it's the same uh, cardiac rhythm. So I'll click done here. So we got our vitals in. So now we can go to exam. Uh, exam, this is going to cover just about everything else. Uh, we can put in a time again. Uh, it actually does not require a time for the exam. Uh, we have a mental status assessment. Put oriented, unresponsive, whatever it may be. Neurological. Uh, this can be uh, your uh, stroke test. Um, if they have tremors, seizures, whatever it may be. Skin assessment. Head assessment. So here, DCAP BTLS. Face assessment, same thing. Eye assessment. Uh, if you're measuring the eyes, if you've you got deformities, if you got sluggish, whatever it may be, bilateral left or right, chest or lungs, you got your breath sounds, uh, DCAP BTLS of the chest, heart assessment, 
Um, and then you got your spine assessment. So we'll just say that he's got uh, general back pain. Um, and then we have all different options that we can choose. Tenderness, DCAT, once again, DCAT, BTLS, gunshot wound, whatever it may be. Uh, extremities. At all your different extremities. Um, and then once again, you've got BTLS, and then you got your uh, pulse motory sensory options as well. Uh, and then pelvic and GI. So lots of different uh, options within the assessment or the exam area. All right, so now we'll move on to procedure. Um, this is another area where the background settings are going to play in. So we'll say Andy Dalton did this again. Um, automatically populates to 2009 paramedic. Um, and I'm not sure if Mark has the procedures narrowed down. I think he should. But when 2009 paramedic is selected here, it will narrow down to just the procedures that uh, that individual can perform. So we'll say that... Uh, did C-spine stabilization. Actually, we'll go in here and we'll do a vascular access. And we'll say you got a vein extremity. So when I do that, it'll pop up with vascular access location. Uh, it gives you all the locations. We'll say left AC. We'll say you got an 18, and it took them one attempt. Um, and then at the bottom, you have response to the procedure any complications and if it was successful uh, complications there you go lots of different options again um, so that's pretty much the procedures obviously you've got many different procedures that you can narrow down in the uh, settings area of the NIMSIS 3 um, under certifications so that you don't have to if you're not um, doing blood products or packed red blood cells, which most paramedics, I would say, are not. Um, you can narrow those down so that uh, your guys don't have to run through those and search through them as they're entering in their reports. So we'll hit done. Once again, we have the option to hit add another if we need to. We got one uh, quick question, too. Yep, go ahead. All right, the question is, is the activity during the assessment or the activity when the problem started? That was the question. Ooh. Let's see here. I would say it is the activity when it started. Okay. So you have their uh, activity is milking an animal? Yeah. Okay. You, the, which, once again, it doesn't – I don't even think walking is in here. Well, well yeah, yeah, that's like – so essentially what happened is the chief complaint or whatever the problem was – what was the patient doing? You know, what was their last physical activity that they were performing right. before the onset of the, the yeah. Or, or, okay. Yeah, I th that's that's the way I understand it. Yes. Okay. All right. So in uh, medication, oops, excuse me. In the uh, medication, this is uh, just like the procedure. Uh, when you select the personnel and certification, the medications that are able to be given are narrowed down. Um, and then you also have frequent uh, medication administration. So if I say, we'll say we gave Narcan, uh, it'll come up with frequent uh, administrations. And this will uh, is also another preset in the background. And uh, it also will read uh, frequent ones that are given by the guys and then that uh, they put in. So we'll say two milligrams intranasal. Automatically comes up with intranasal for the route. But you have all your different routes here. And it also comes up with just milligrams. Once again, you got the response and uh, any complica um, complications, excuse me, uh, and and the medications given, you've got all kinds of medications, and this is another area where you can help your uh, your crews out by uh, 
going ahead and narrowing down the medications so that they do not have to uh, cycle through here and try to figure out what they uh, need to select. Uh, because if you're not, you know, if you're not getting benzocaine or uh, something like that, it can uh, remove it from the list and it'll help them out a lot. So we'll say done. And uh, so we've done our initial assessment, vitals, exam, procedure, and medications. We'll move on to labs here. Uh, this is an area that is a NIMSIS requirement. A lot of people don't necessarily use it, uh, but it is an area that you have the ability to put in some good information uh, if you're collecting it. I know that some EMS agencies are starting to collect labs in the field. Uh, so you can put in a time prior to the EMS care, and then you have the ability to put in the uh, lab result types, and you have all sorts of stuff, alcohol, lactates, mags, troponins, all sorts of different options. And then you put in your result. So we'll say, uh, we'll do troponin. We'll say we got a zero. So we have our lab result in there. Uh, you have your images that you can add files, uh, just like in other areas of the system. You can add in uh, lab results, and you can put in lab result uh, imaging study types and study results. Uh, once again, you may not probably be using this, but it is there if you are. So you have the ability to add another, and uh, we'll just click done. And now we'll move on to device. Um, this is an area where you can, if I click add edit account equipment, it's going to take me actually to the asset management or maintenance area of the system um, where I can add in uh, equipment that I can select for my report. So I can add in my uh, cardiac monitors, whatever it may be, uh, AEDs. I can put in the date and time of event and what I did, so I can say I did 12 lead, I can do uh, defibrillation, sink, uh, temperatures, whatever it may be. If you want your guys to be monitoring, or excuse me, uh, documenting this stuff uh, within the device column as well, um, you have the ability to add in files, so you can take a picture of your 12 lead and put it in here, um, and then you can uh, document your shocks, uh, document leads, and uh, EKG interpre interpretations as well. Once again, add another or done. So we'll just click done. We'll move on to event because now we've got uh, our green check mark still. So we'll move on to events and we have possible injury. Um, hey, Alan? Yeah. Hey, before we move before too far, I, I've got a couple questions that are popping up. And, yeah. Um, it, it's kind of stemmed around, and I understand a lot of this stuff is driven by Nemesis 3, um, and there's yeah. kind of not really any way to customize some things. But and the questions are, what if there's simple things like such as hypertension where there's a list of them, but you can't specifically narrow it down to one particular sign, symptom, situation? How do you, right. how do you record that? That that is a great question that I've gone back and forth with uh, with our EMS chief and also with uh, Tom and Mark. Um, and every time we go back to it, you go into uh, the Nemesis Data Dictionary. Here we go in here. If you go in the Nemesis Data Dictionary, this is the information that they give you. And uh, what's in so hypertension, hypertension was one that they were right. talking about. They, they did narrow it down to just hypertension. I know before that it was, um, they had different options, but they did narrow it down just to hypertension. Um, and I think that they narrowed down stroke as well. Let's see here. What about no symptoms? Uh, let's see. Because before I know that it had hemorrhagic, uh, ischemic, whatever kind what of stroke. And my thing was, you cannot, we're not diagnosing in the field. We're just saying, that, yeah, it looks like they have a stroke. I think they've, they've redirected under history. Oh, under history? Yeah, sorry. Um, let's go in here.
Yeah. Um, so history. Let's see here. Where am, why am I lost? Oh, right here. Um, history. This is an area where you can narrow down this these options in the ICD-10 codes under settings. So real quick, I'll take you there. Under um, required fields and customizations. And it'll take a second to pull up because it, there's so many of them. Right here, select ICD-10 codes. There's like 20, I, I forget how many, 50,000 something ICD-10 codes, 20,000, something like that. Come on. There we go. So this is where these ICD-10 codes apply is under the uh, history area. So if I go in here, it should. Well, it's not narrowing it down. So that looks like a bug that we need to fix. Yeah, because right now it looks like your list is showing only show those, but it's showing everything. Yeah. Well, I will write that down because that okay. the ICD-10 codes and the uh, settings here are supposed to narrow down the history as well. So I will write that down. And we'll take care of that. But I agree that it's that unfortunately Nemesis is driven around insurance and doctors, and we're not diagnosing. We not, don't necessarily know what kind of hypertension it may be, so it doesn't doesn't really apply well to us. So yeah. unfortunately, hey, well, I'll, I'll let a great answer there. Yeah, I get it. All right, so events, uh, it automatically goes to unknown. Um, that way you don't have to go in and select this every time. Uh, but since this was a fall, man, overtime's calling like crazy. Uh, possible injury, we'll click uh, yes since this was a fall. And this is where we can do uh, cause of injury. And we'll say that he fell from... Let's see here. We'll f say he fell on the stairs. Uh, we can put in our mechanism of injury, uh, trauma center criteria. We have injury risk factors if it's a pedestrian accident, if it's a motor vehicle accident, whatever it may be. The height of the fall. So we can say he fell 12 feet. Uh, vehicle vehicle related injuries. This is where you can uh, say what was going on with the car, whether the airbags went off, where the person was sitting, if they were wearing their seat belts, etc. Automatic collision notification. Uh, I guess some. I talked to one department uh, at our RTA in Cleveland, and they were starting to get black box information off of cars. Uh, so this is an area where you can enter in that information if you. Are collecting that. So that's all of the injury area. So I'll make that small. And then we have cardiac arrest where you can go through all the information. And as I select things, it's going to require different um, different boxes. I won't I won't bore everybody in going through that. Uh, we'll select no though. Uh, once again, work related incidents. Um, and then stroke symptoms, whether or not they were resolved uh, by the time you got to the hospital. So that's event. We got our green check mark. We move on to destination. Like I said before, this is where you got your final patient acuity. So we'll say green. Uh, how did you transport from the scene? Once again, emergent uh, or non-emergent. Uh, destination type. Uh, once again, this is uh, where information is going to auto-populate from your settings, where you entered in your destinations. So we'll say Miami Valley automatically selects different options, or excuse me, different different settings. 
Uh, reason for choosing it, we'll say it was the closest facility. Uh, you have pre-alert, if you're calling a, tr a stroke alert, a cardiac alert, a trauma alert, whatever it may be, put in the time that you called it. Uh, hey, you put, um, Alan, real quick one yeah. thing. Um, if you could, if um, all the participants who are listening, if you're having, uh, there's one that says that, um, like when you pull up some lists, yours says not applicable or not recorded. Um, he's saying that his doesn't. It ah. doesn't give that option. So we're going to, I'm going to, I'll show you real quick here. We're going to go yeah, back to that setting. That's a couple different things, okay. Um, so same thing, we're in the uh, required fields and customizations under administration. Collect not values. If that box is not checked, you will not be able to put not applicable, not recorded, and... Okay, and there's also the, uh, I see the, on this one we have the enable frequent flyer. Um, someone asked earlier about collecting um, medication information, basically information about frequent flyers. So if they haven't gone into the administration or have someone from their agency do that, they need to make sure that they, they check those settings and hopefully it will alleviate some issues. Correct, agency. yeah. If, if these, if the enable frequent flyer is not checked, you will not get that option to pop up. That's a good point, thank you. Yep. I do recommend, uh, well, personally, I recommend not values just because NIMSIS is so difficult trying to squeeze uh, squeeze a patient into what they want you to select. So yeah. to me, it helps. Now, you know, different chiefs are going to have different opinions on that. But for me, uh, it just NIMSIS is, tries to squeeze so much into one, one selection that you kind of need them. So... Um, and then you also, in the under destination, jumping back, you have uh, the ED destination, uh, if you are collecting information, and um, the hospital capability, this is a, a uh, area where your settings are going to pre-populate it. Um, inpatient destination, if you're recording that information. Once again, this is a lot of NIMSIS information that, uh, real quick, I'll show you. The NIMSIS Data Dictionary, if nobody, if you've never looked at it, 721 pages of just federal bureaucratic nonsense. So if you ever have any questions of why it has different information or why it's asking for different information, this is why. <laughs> so that uh, ERS does a really good job of, of making sure all of the boxes are there so that if your state does require different information, you can collect it. So we got our green check mark and destination, so we'll move on to billing. Um, only thing that's required under billing is primary method of payment. Um, so we'll select insurance there. Actually, Tom, or uh, excuse me, Mark has made other things required in here. So we'll say insurance is required, uh, or insurance is the method of payment. Uh, you have the ability to put in insurance information, uh, physician certification statements, and then you have your response and transportation. And this is an area where you can uh, require, the one thing that you do have the option to change is requiring on-scene odometer reading of the responding vehicle. So we'll say 1,200 and 1,202, and it'll automatically populate your transport mileage. Um, once again, I'll jump back into the required fields and customizations. Um, this is where you can require odometer readings right here. If you have uh, nothing selected in here, then this, this area would not have red asterisks and it would not be required for your crews to fill in. Um, and then down below we have supplies used. Um, and unfortunately this does not go into our inventory list and take anything out. It just is an area where you can record any supplies that were used. Um, hopefully in the future that will be a feature that will uh, come to fruition where if you add in here that you used an ET tube, it will automatically take an ET tube out of the supplies. 
uh, fingers crossed that will be a uh, feature here in the future. So we got our green check for billing. We'll move on to files and signatures. This is where, we, once again, we can add more files. Um, frequently, I add uh, pictures of auto accidents. I add pictures of the vehicles in here uh, so that they're attached to the uh, report. And then because I selected traded and transported, I'm required to my chief, a.k.a. Mark Wolf, has required that I put in a uh, HIPAA form. So I'll show you real quick. I know we're not doing the settings today, but I'll show you where that is. Under forms, we have our HIPAA form and treatment refusal, and we have selected the different dispositions that each is required for. So since I so have uh, treated transported by this EMS unit selected, back in my report, it's requiring me to do a HIPAA form. So I click on the form. He's got his legalese, blah, blah, blah. So Jim Shu can sign. Um, if he's not in it, if he's not able to sign, you can select why he's not in, not able to sign. And for the crew member, we'll put in me. And once I've selected the type of crew, type of person signing, and I click done, we go green. Um, if I need to add another form, uh, say you have a refusal of certain treatment, whatever it may be, you can add in that. Um, and that is our files and signatures. And then go on to narrative. Type up your narrative. You have a uh, review requested. Um, this doesn't necessarily create an alert for anybody. It just will have review requested on the report. Um, you have potential system of care. You can select that. Once we have, uh, let's say, blah, blah, blah again. Once we have our narrative done, we can move on to summary, and we'll get a green check mark. Um, basic info three, so we'll have to go back here real quick. It's required to have the zone. So now that I got that done, I'll go back into my patient and summary page. And down here, you've got the new uh, status bar for the PCR report. Um, new KBA I'm working on, a knowledge base article, will be out here soon, finishing up that in between my work shifts. And uh, you'll be able to see the different, uh, different statuses that this will show. So we'll go in here and authorize the patient care report. And when I do that, I'm done. So once I'm done with that, I can go to my narrative, finish out my inference report. Um, if I have a automatic state export, my EMS tab up here will go orange. And this will show pending review. Um, and then, then once it has been a fully approved and the state has said that the PCR is validated, it'll be NIMPS is fully approved. And then uh, that's it for your patient care report. A lot of information in a short amount of time. Um, Stephen, we got any big questions out there? No, the, uh, I think um, the only thing that I would like to kind of reiterate with folks is to make sure that um, some of the issues that people were asking questions about, it looks like it goes back to the settings that they have in their administration module. Um, yeah. Just make sure that you, you go uh, have your administrator go through and double check uh, things that you maybe you're having difficulty with. Just go through those options. Um, if you've got way too many codes that you don't probably ever foresee using, you have the ability to enable, disable. Um, just make sure you look at those options real good. Um, let's see here, I think. And I will, uh, in the chat window here, I will send out a link to our uh, NEMSIS 3 setup 
uh, virtual Thursday from when did we do that? That was September 21st. So I'll send out that link as well. Uh, Mark, I was the wingman for that one. Mark does a really good job of going over those settings. Um, so that'll help as well. All right, and there's one more. It says, um, okay, now it says, is there still in the works for states that don't require submission? Um, Not sure I understand the question here. Hang on a second. Okay. Yeah, it says EMS tab staying red on ours because we don't send it to any state. Um, basically, it's getting confused. Uh, so basically, it's showing it's kind of an incomplete call because it's not submitting to a state. Are you familiar with that? Okay. Um, whoever had that question, if they want to send, send me your... Um, information through the chat you can select me Alan Miller uh, just individually on the bottom if you want to send me your information through the chat I will uh, take that up the ladder and see if, see what we can figure out about that and then one says it um, on the, when you were entering mileage um, that theirs requires them to put a decimal and ours didn't when you put it on the demo okay let me see here Let's see. You had a question about that. Um, I don't know if it was a, an admin setting or not. Yeah, let me see here. We had that question at the Cleveland RTA, and they weren't able to repeat that. Uh, the support group wasn't able to. So. Once again, if you want to send me your uh, information through the chat window uh, individually to me, I will uh, take that up the, the ladder and see what we can figure out about that. Let me see here. Okay. Yeah, it shouldn't it shouldn't be doing that. Um, and the other thing too, I want to I want to add. Um, I know there's a lot of folks on here, um, but if at any time after this is over with, um, if you have any any questions. Um, Myself and Alan both have our emails available on the uh, the training on the emergency reporting uh, training reference. Uh, feel free to reach out. Um, Alan uses this much more than I do, um, so hopefully we were able to answer all your questions. Uh, I know there's mainly just a couple folks asking questions, but hopefully we were able to answer them the best we could. Yeah, 100%. Um, I actually I will uh, send our emails out through the chat window again here, um, and then I'll I'll hang for a second here and make sure that. Um, everybody's able to get them if they want them. Um, and like I said, you know, if if, if you if you need an online uh, a training or if uh, if you're able to get out to the RTAs, we had a, a great time in Cleveland. I learned a lot personally um, with the Nemesis Three, just being able to interact with some other departments and uh, seeing how how they were using and how they interpreted some of the NEMSIS information, so it's a great opportunity to be able to um, network and figure out figure out some information as a group, because the federal government, they're our favorite people, they, uh, they like to confuse us a little bit. <laughs> All right, well, if we don't have any other questions, uh, that was a, we, we finished out pretty much on time, so... Uh, and once again, if you do have some questions after after the fact, don't hesitate to send myself and Alan an email, and uh, we'll work with the best that we can. So hopefully, during this session, we were able to get a good cover of the of the module. Yeah, yeah, one hundred percent. And I appreciate everyone's interaction and uh, questions with uh, Stephen. And Stephen, thanks for helping out and answering those questions. And hopefully, we uh, provide some good insight today. <laughs>